Minneapolis starts right now. After some strong to severe storms overnight, we have a few leftover showers heading off to the east. However, more storms are going to be developing later on this afternoon. Plus, severe weather being seen in other parts of the country as reported tornado touchdown east of Oklahoma City. And this morning after overnight storms, we've got a few wet spots on the roads and it's about as humid as it gets around here. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, May 5th. Thanks for joining us today. A very noisy overnight for a lot of people. Yeah, storms woke me up just before midnight. I was telling Mike I checked radar. I saw there was some hail yes. in some of these. Got a little worried about it and then it immediately fell back asleep. Well, yeah, Mike, it was noisy for you as well. Oh yeah, and and I, th I think, you know, in that slumber when you wake up from the storms, I thought I heard maybe a little bit of uh, some pea-sized hail mm -hmm. as well. We had some uh, some folks talk about that. So a little tic-tac sound on the window. Yes, indeed. And we are not done with the rain yet. We will have some more popping up later on this afternoon. It's uh, pretty tranquil out there right now. As you can see, as Mark mentioned, a few wet spots on the roads and all of the rain continues to work its way off to the east and it doesn't even look there may be one or two uh, lightning strikes being detected well off there to the east of us. And these are some light couple of moderate showers there. It was coming down pretty good. Obviously here in town, we did have a uh, flood advisory for a time earlier this morning because picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain and all that pretty much came at once that was out there at the airport and then heavier amounts on the west side of town. I'm going to show you that coming up a little bit later on 73 right now, 71 in comfort. So slightly cooler air than yesterday by a degree or two, but like Steph said, we still have plenty of humidity out there. Mold is on the low side. This is the, the numbers all from yesterday. Everything else is low as well, including oak. So hopefully we were finally done with that season and throughout the day. Most of the cloudy skies, a couple leftover showers this morning, stubborn clouds, and then we will see a few more showers and thunderstorms popping up later on today. Some gusty winds. Most of those storms are going to be further to the north. So this is what the Storm Prediction Center has is the just the risk for a few isolated storms to become potentially severe high winds and hail being the biggest threats. The majority of that, though, is going to be further up to the north. So we'll sort of be on the tail end of it, but that doesn't mean we won't see one or two of those potentially stronger storms. Then after that, things start to clear on out and get ready for the heat this weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. We do have some power outages to report. They're down to about 1,300 customers throughout the CPS Energy uh, Service area. Our producer tells us that overnight, at one point, there were over 7,000 customers. Crews are still working to restore power, and we'll continue to monitor these outages here in our area. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters responded to a two alarm fire at a northwest side apartment complex overnight. It happened around nine last night in the 1800 block of Bandera Road near Bloomfield Drive. Heavy flames showing from the center of the building when fire crews got there. 32 units were dispatched to the scene. Fire crews were able to get everyone out safely. We're told two apartments had serious damage. Two others had moderate damage. This morning, arson investigators will go to the scene to take a closer look. However, San Antonio's fire chief says there were some kids setting off fireworks in the parking lot before the fire. And this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a 15 year old girl. Yvette Williams was last seen in the 3000 block of Battle Cry in West Bear County, and this was on Tuesday around 10 p.m. So she was last seen wearing a red shirt and red shorts with black lettering. She has a nose piercing on the right side and she wears black glasses. Anyone with any information on Yvette's whereabouts, they are urged to contact the Bear County Sheriff's Office at number 210-335. 6,000, or you can email them at missingpersons at bear.org. Out of more severe weather, tornadoes hitting the Great Plains. The images are just coming in from Oklahoma, and millions of Americans are on alert for more severe storms today. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the details. This morning, widespread damage is being reported in Seminole, Oklahoma after multiple tornadoes hit near the Texas border. I'm looking out in front of me and I'm seeing a, a lot more damage as we continue to fly over the town. Um, this this was a, a, a very strong storm. One reported tornado making a direct hit on downtown Seminole, damaging buildings and tearing down power lines. Ten people were trapped inside this storm shelter after debris fell on top of it. All of them, including a baby, reportedly made it out safely. This is bricks that they're getting out of the road and it's bricks from this building building right here. Uh, we're not really sure what kind of building it, it, it was. Uh, it's obviously really dark out here, so we can't tell, but 
That is the building that's destroyed. This is the roof to that building. It's completely gone. It's on the ground now. That's where the tornado is right now. The strong wind sending these marijuana plants sky high, tearing apart the grow houses at a marijuana farm. Tornadoes have hit the U.S. in record numbers so far this year. 218 reported in March alone, the highest number ever for that month before tornado season even technically began. New video show the devastating tornado that hit Andover, Kansas last week, damaging more than 1,000 buildings. The twister packing winds up to 155 miles per hour. The surveillance video showing the tornado just missing City Hall. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, Russia has moved to obstruct the flow of Western weapons to Ukraine by bombarding rail stations and other supply targets across the country. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called these strikes crimes and said that his armed forces would respond on the battlefield. Heavy fighting also raged at a Mariupol steel mill, which represents the last stronghold of Ukrainian resistance in the ruined southern port city. Meanwhile, the European Union is deciding whether to further punish Moscow with a ban on all oil imports. And security at the Supreme Court is in overdrive this morning following confirmation from Chief Justice John Roberts that a leaked draft opinion on the future of abortion was authentic. Overnight crews began putting up tall fencing outside the Supreme Court building amid concerns over protesters and demonstrators. Uh, Justice Alito, who wrote the leaked opinion, has also canceled an appearance at a judicial conference today. Meanwhile, President Biden is warning of a possible ripple effect of overturning the landmark abortion ruling. The White House taking a closer look at the issue of food insecurity. According to a White House official, President Biden will host a conference in September focused on ending hunger and improving nutrition across the nation. The administration believes the meeting will lead to a plan to help reduce the rates of diabetes, obesity, and hypertension among Americans. They also want to speed up efforts to end hunger in the U.S. Last time the White House hosted such a conference was more than 50 years ago with President Richard Nixon. That event led to the expansions of the food stamp and school lunch programs and the creation of WIC, a federal program that assists pregnant women, new mothers, and their babies. And time now, 437 and 73 degrees for now. Up next, how the NBA and others are reacting to rise in flagrant fouls during the Western Conference semifinal series. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guide out there. A lot of rain overnight, so let's look to see how things are doing at I-10 and Brazos. Things are moving so far. And outside with live camp, very, very humid this morning. Uh, Mike often talks about uh, your fog up your glasses kind of day. That's true. I promise. We're going to talk to him coming up. We are on storm alerts on this Thursday. We'll be back. The NBA expected to meet with both the Warriors and Grizzlies after the first two games of their Western Conference semifinal series. It's featured two flagrants and ejections over more than just physical play. Most recent is early in game two when the Grizzlies' Dylan Brooks chased down Gary Payton the second and hit him so hard in the head it knocked Payton to the court where he broke his left elbow. Here's another look as Brooks completely misses the ball, connects hard with Payton's head, knocking him to the court, and he comes up holding his left arm. MRI later confirmed a fractured elbow. That's the second flagrant that has got someone tossed in this series. First one coming when Draymond Green hit Brandon Clark in the head and then dragged him down by his jersey. Congrats to former UTSA Roadrunner and Judson Rockin' Sincere McCormick, who signed with the Las Vegas Raiders. Announcement made by Sincere on his social media yesterday after he went undrafted last weekend. McCormick left UTSA after his junior year to enter the NFL draft, leaving as an all-time leading rusher in Roadrunner history. He rushed for a Conference USA high 1,479 yards and pitched 15 touchdowns on 298 carries, setting a new UTSA record for most all-purpose yards. Now to soccer, four San Antonio FC players named to the United Soccer League Championship Team of the Week. That's following their club record 6-0 victory over Monterey Bay FC last Saturday. Now San Antonio FC, who's 7-0-1, gets ready to face Phoenix FC this Saturday night. That USL match coming before they go up against the second MLS team, the Houston Dynamo. Kickoff against Phoenix is Saturday in Phoenix, set for 9.30 
p.m. And that's a quick look at morning sports. And time now, 442 and 73 degrees for now. So it is Cinco de Mayo and celebrations usually involve food and drink. Coming up next, we're going to show you how to get the best of cultural dishes using healthier options. And next, an urgent warning for car owners everywhere as catalytic converter thefts continue to rise. And welcome back. It's 445. Catalytic converter theft continues to rise across the country with thieves able to steal them in just under a minute. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an urgent warning for car owners everywhere. Took a sawzall, cut through here and cut through here and the unit dropped and then took off with it. Watch as these brazen thieves in Pompano Beach, Florida steal catalytic converters in just under a minute. One man seen here getting under this landscaping truck, him and his partner taking off with 16 converters, which the owners say is roughly $32,000 in value. These converters are made with precious metals like rhodium. Because of world events and supply chain issues, the price of those has skyrocketed in recent years. And the problem is nationwide. More than 52,000 converters were reported stolen in 2021. That's a shocking increase of 1,215% since 2019. Feels very violating. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert tips to keep your car safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. It is Cinco de Mayo, a day to celebrate Mexican culture with parades and parties and a lot of food and drink. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris shows us there are ways to spice up the menu and also make it healthy. Cheers. Celebrations in the Montiel home are rich in flavor and tradition. Very squishy. For Saul and Eliana, cooking is a family affair. They make rice and beans two different ways, Mexican and Dominican style. Besides being delicious, rice and beans can also be really healthy. Black beans, pinto beans, kidney beans, they're all packed with antioxidants and fiber, plus the minerals potassium and magnesium. White rice is often fortified with B vitamins, but for maximum nutrition, you could choose brown rice. Combined, brown rice and beans pack a powerful protein punch. Boost flavor with garlic, onions, and herbs instead of ham hocks or bacon. Mexican flavors feature other healthy basics too, like avocados, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and chilies. You can cut back on sodium by making your own fresh dips, like guacamole or salsa, seasoned to your taste. Ta -da. Whoa! La tortilla. Tortilla. And which tortilla to wrap it up? Corn is a whole grain, while flour versions are typically made with refined wheat flour, which lacks nutrients. And don't forget the frozen margarita. Not all home blenders can create the concoction. CR recommends this instant ace for about $120. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's check traffic right now. I saw one incident on 281 on my way into work here the near the downtown area on one of those curves, but I'm sure it's clear by now. As I'm looking at the map, I see a lot of green right now, but that will change in the next hour or so as more people hit the roads. You noticed a lot of people hitting the roads early. Yeah, morning. kind of like yesterday. People were getting a jump yes. start on the day, or we have a whole lot of people either working overnights or the super early morning shift, Mike. Yes, indeed. And uh, one thing to watch out for on the roads, too, because, you know, this storm came in and hit really hard really quickly mm -hmm. and just about a quarter of an inch of rain out there at the airport, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it came almost all at once. And even on the west side of town picked up, let me show you this in a second, picked up anywhere from uh, say an inch to almost two inches of rain. So there could still be some ponding. We did have a flood advisory earlier this morning. Also with those storms had some pretty good winds that came on in here down some trees. We had some wind gusts reported uh, over at uh, Lackland about 55 miles per hour, even some 60 mile per hour wind gusts. And then further out to the west around Kinney County, had some wind gusts reported upwards of about uh, 70 miles per hour with those big storms that moved on through here. Speaking of rain, here's what's going on right now. We still have just a few more uh, leftover showers kind of hanging around the area. Not much. Most of it has definitely moved off to the east and there aren't even any uh, lightning strikes showing up with this at all. Just this uh, kind of leftover. There may be a few leftover showers here and there, and that's pretty much going to be it for the time being. We'll have 
kind of a, a lull in the action. Then it's going to be uh, picking back up. So going back into last night as those storms developed and came in off the, the mountains of Mexico and it almost drove in right along 90 all the way into San Antonio. And that's the path of all of the uh, the showers and the, the heavy downpours, obviously. And like I said, all that rain continues to work its way off to the east. But again, this thing dumped some pretty good rain as it moved in from Del Rio. Heavier rain over there uh, just across the river in Mexico. Mexico, but uh, some spots, three inches of rain, almost two lakey or excuse me, northern Uvalde County, about one and a half inches of rain. And then just north of Hondo, radar estimates of about two inches of rain. Then here in town, again, it was the west and southwest side, about two inches right around Medina Lake, two inches of rain, fantastic amount going up in toward Kendall County, an inch. And then right around downtown, about a half an inch of rain. And again, most of this all came in just one fell swoop, and that's why it prompted that uh, flood advisory. Right now, 73 degrees in town, some 60s in the hill country. Yeah, we still have plenty of humidity out there. 75 is the dew point at Stinson. Yeah, that's the fog up your glasses kind of humidity, and we're not really going to be seeing much of any break in the humidity. I'm going to keep that small chance for a couple of uh, showers in the forecast this morning just to take into account those leftovers off to the east. Temperatures will be in the mid 70s, and then we will see some sunshine mixed in and then the showers and thunderstorms are going to refire later on today. We're going to hit a high temperature of 84 degrees later on and most all of the rain later on this afternoon is going to be further up to the north. This is the rapid update computer model and the showers and thunderstorms are going to get firing up again and it's going to be this this line that moves on through here. But again, the majority of this stays further up to the north, but that doesn't mean we won't see anything down here south on the tail end of that. We could still see some of those stronger storms. Matter of fact, Storm Prediction Center one or two of those isolated, uh, potentially severe storms, large hail and strong winds are going to be the biggest threat. Can't rule out an isolated tornado completely. It's not very likely at all. But again, going up to the north, Austin, further north of there is where the majority of the really strong storms are going to be. So the forecast today, a couple leftover showers this morning, wet roads, mostly cloudy at noon, and then things refire later on this afternoon, especially up to the north. But that doesn't mean we're not going to see something down around San Antonio, but it's pretty much San Antonio up to the north and to the northeast. 84 for a high temperature. And then after that, things are going to be clearing out. We actually have a cool morning, 66 tomorrow, down closer to a normal low temperature. But then we heat up uh, 30 plus degrees, and that's going to be the situation. Heating up about 25 degrees over the weekend. 96 tomorrow, 100 Saturday, Sunday, 96 on Monday. Well, we will enjoy the 60s tomorrow morning then. Yeah, that'll <laughs> well, be can. nice. The closest number on that uh, graphic that's closest to its respective normal. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Thank you, Mike. 452, about 73 degrees. And coming up next, a look at a new streaming series starring Mike Myers in the role of eight characters. Five Till Mike Myers plays eight characters in a new Netflix series, plus Dolly Parton gets honored. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm being sent to Dubrovnik, I repeat, sent to Dubrovnik. It's a record number of characters in a single project for Mike Myers. He plays eight different roles in the new Netflix series, The Pentaver, which he also created. It's all about a secret society that's been running the world for centuries, and I tried to get him to tell me if he's in a secret society. Well, I can neither confirm nor deny the existence or non-existence of any secret society that I am or not in. Um, and I've been obsessed with secret societies my whole life. The Pentaver also stars Keegan Michael Key and Debbie Mazar. It's out today on Netflix. Also out today, season two of the comedy Girls 5 Eva, which finds the reunited girl group getting ready to make an album. Talking to star Sarah Bareilles and Renee Elise Goldsberry, Goldsberry told me there was one scene towards the end of the season where she could not stop laughing. And I was asked out of nowhere, I was not prepared, I'll admit, to sing as if this was a song from Bruce Springsteen, the musical. I had to, do you know what I mean? I had to just like out of nowhere and it just was all, it all became. Bruce Springsteen, yeah. <laughs> arms, legs, jeans, and a mouth. And tragically, the scene was cut. You won't see it on the show, which returns today on Peacock.
Dolly Parton says she will accept her nomination into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, her name one of those announced Wednesday. She previously said she didn't think she deserved to get in, but now she tweeted that she's humbled and honored and will accept gracefully. And her last album was called 30, but today Adele turns 34, while another kind of superstar, Superman actor Henry Cavill, is 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Be, uh... And the latest James Bond rumors have included Mr. Cavill as well. Oh, I can see that now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Too, too, buff? too buff? I don't know. Oh. Some, some would say, is there such a thing, Mike? I think. Right now, about three minutes till five, about 73 degrees. You've mm. never heard that, Mike? No. <laughs> Still ahead on GMSA, tall fencing being installed outside the Supreme Court this morning following that leaked draft opinion that could lead to the end of Roe versus Wade. Plus how TikTok is making it a little easier to generate revenue from posts than details coming up in Tech Bytes. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuy looking there at I-10 and Brazos where things are moving. But we will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We have a few leftover showers moving well off to the east this morning. Another chance for some showers and storms this afternoon. And then here comes the heat for the weekend. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, where there is now new security fencing going up around the U.S. Supreme Court just days after the leak of that draft opinion. More on that and what the president is saying about that opinion. And outside with live cam, Mike mentioned storms. I'm going to talk about humidity. It's about as humid as it gets out there and lots of clouds in place after those overnight showers and storms for some of you. Good morning, everybody. It is Cinco de Mayo. That's right. Thursday, May 5th. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you had a great week so far. Again, yeah, you're right about the humidity, but we had a lot of storms overnight. So let's go ahead and see the outage map this morning. Right now we're at 980 customers affected by outages and crews, of course, are working to restore power. Let's go to Mike and get the very latest on what could be another stormy forecast. Yeah, this afternoon, uh, instead of the overnight storms like we've had the past a couple of evenings, looks like it looks like it is going to be this afternoon right now now we are just reporting cloudy skies out there at the airport 75 degrees and then you look at that bottom number is at 72 that's the measure moisture in the atmosphere the dew point so you got 90 percent humidity yep it is really darn humid out there and we're going to make it up to mid 80s later on today i think with uh, all the extra humidity and a lot of cloud cover we will be staying lower than the past a few days. And then as far as the aquifer is concerned, now hopefully with some of the rain last night that fell in parts of the recharge zone, this should get a bit of a boost. But in yesterday's reading, it did go down four tenths of a foot. Of course, still in stage two water restrictions. Everything is on the light side. Mold, it'll be interesting to see what happens when the updated count comes out later on this morning. Mold probably going to be going up, but at least uh, oak is on the low side along with grass and pecan. So here is what it looks like on radar as of right now. We've got a few leftover showers off to the east. Everything is moving on through here. A little, uh, little bit of hail overnight. There were some reports of some pea-sized hail and even uh, larger hail off to the west. And then also very, very strong winds with uh, some of those thunderstorms that moved on through here. Anywhere from 50 to 60 mile per hour winds were reported in and around Bear County, especially off uh, to the west. And uh, not anything real heavy being picked up right now on radar. Just a few, uh, well, even a thunderstorm cell right here down just to the northeast of Carn City. But all this continues to work its way off to the east fairly quickly. Now, later on this afternoon, we're going to see more showers and thunderstorms developing. There's a big system which is going to be kind of sweeping across the area. We'll be on the tail end of it, which is why just one or two isolated the threat for isolated severe storm, high winds and hail being the biggest threat with that. And more of that or the greater risk is going to be further up to the north. So again, we'll be on the tail end of it be few and far between, but that doesn't mean we won't see something potentially severe around here. So a couple leftover showers off to the east this morning. Also, you want to watch out for maybe some ponding on the roads because uh, rainfall amounts were anywhere from a half an inch to or a quarter half an inch up to an inch, almost two inches of rain, even in and around Bear County. There was a flood advisory earlier this morning. That's because all that came almost all at once. So there may still be some ponding on the roads in spots. Showers and storms this afternoon, mainly up to the north and then 
Yes, call it cooler tomorrow, mid 60s, still slightly above normal, but the coolest morning we're going to be seeing this week and then hotter in the afternoon and even hotter this weekend. It is going to be sizzling with plenty of sunshine for Saturday and Mother's Day. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Uh, I wouldn't say we've seen big issues out on the roadways at this hour, Mike. I know Mark had mentioned an issue off 281. Thankfully, that is cleared out and we are seeing some quiet roads. Let's get a wide look at Trans Guide and show you how the morning is shaping up. There's 90 West at Zazamora uh, looking pretty lonely out there, but we are seeing some folks off 281 at Nakoma and then we're not really spotting those big issues this early in the morning. However, we do want drivers to remain alert, especially with that possible ponding out on the roadways and of course some damp roads, but we really want to take your attention right over here to the southwest side. Now we told you about this yesterday. I uh, got on the phone with our friends over at Transguide early this morning. They tell us that there is still a road closure being reported right there at Old Pierce Hall Road between Covell Road and Excellence Drive. Now, this is due to a sinkhole that was reported by TxDOT yesterday. Now, they are still, uh, right now, it's not determined what caused that sinkhole, but SAWS was also helping investigating the situation out there. Uh, according to TxDOT, as of yesterday, SAWS has wrapped up that their part of the investigation, but that closure will remain in place until further notice. Of course, you may want to start looking for those alternative routes. You can see a bunch of red out there, which indicates there is going to be that closure. So, let's go ahead and get that wide look at the map. 505 as I mentioned, no other problems to report just yet, but we'll keep an eye on the roads and also keep our eyes on these travel times. No need to rush out the door. A 30 minute drive time from Pleasanton, 90 coming in from Cashville, 20 minutes and a 17 minute drive time from Lytle. Other than that, we're looking like we're in great shape. Again, we'll have more updates coming up right here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio Fire Department responding to a two alarm blaze at an apartment building on the city's northwest side. All right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And good morning, Jonathan. Can you give us an update on the situation out there? Good morning, Stephanie. This is a 32 unit apartment building. 23 of them were occupied. Now everybody this morning is displaced. But let's take a look at that video that shows the scene. Shortly after <laughs> 9 o'clock last night, we know San Antonio firefighters uh, responded to the 1800 block of Bandera Road in Hillcrest. That's the Aspire community, uh, apartment community. They say they arrived to one apartment up in flames and upgraded the fire to a two alarm response because of the size of the building. Now, two of the apartments have major damage, but we are told firefighters were able to contain the flames just to this building alone. Now, crews tell us there were kids playing with fireworks out here in the parking lot, but of course, the cause of the fire remains under investigation. It's important to mention the Red Cross did make the scene and property management is working to relocate everyone displaced here. Reporting live from the city's west side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Two men accused of leaving a man bloodied and hogtied on an East Bear County road back in April are now in custody. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar said it was a heinous murder attempt and the victim surprisingly survived. According to the sheriff, the uh, men are responsible. These are the men responsible. You just saw their pictures. 36 year old Daryl King and 24 year old Uriah Huffman. The 24 year old victim suffered multiple gunshot wounds and stab wounds. Sheriff says the men then left him for dead on Lavernia Road, tied up back on April 23rd. Sheriff believes all three men may have been involved in the drug trade. It just shows me the total lack of regard for human life that these two suspects seem to have. Uh, and they're, they're certainly dangerous people that were happy to get off the streets. According to the sheriff, investigators think other people might have been involved. They do have people of interest, but no other suspects yet. Well, this morning, security is uh, fencing is up at the U.S. Supreme Court, where crowds have been gathering all week following the leak of that draft opinion on Roe versus Wade. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with a look at the latest. From coast to coast, days of large and loud abortion rights demonstrations. Abortion has got to go. In downtown Los Angeles, police say abortion rights protests turned violent early Wednesday, leaving one officer injured. And overnight, crews setting up security fencing around the U.S. Supreme Court complex, a level of precaution seen after the January 6th Capitol attack. It comes amid rising tensions after this week's leak of a draft opinion on a pending abortion rights case. That draft appearing to signal the conservative leaning court could be close to overturning Roe v. Wade, the near 50 year old Supreme Court decision granting a right to legal abortion in the U.S. Though not a final opinion, President Biden has called the draft opinion radical. 
What happens if you have a uh, state ch changes the law saying that, that, that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children? Is that, is that legit under the way the, the decision is written? The president also warning of a wider impact on other rights. What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history. In recent American history. ABC's Terry Moran says the president and some legal scholars are raising concerns about key arguments in the draft and possible consequences. There were a lot, of, a lot of gay marriages when the Constitution was written, or interracial marriages. Contraceptives were illegal. And they say that Alito's argument could cut those rights down, no matter what he says, if someone brings a challenge to them. Late Wednesday, word Justice Samuel Alito, the author of that draft opinion, has canceled a judicial conference appearance set for today, a Supreme Court spokeswoman giving no reason as to why. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 510, about 74 degrees. And still ahead, making money with TikTok, how a new program is sharing revenue with creators' ads. Outside with live cam, with showers and storms overnight. Some of them were strong to severe, including hail. And Mike says we could see more storms later on today. Details still to come. 513, the effects of substance abuse can be felt physically, emotionally, and financially. Lifetime Recovery is a local nonprofit that's been trying to help families in the cycle of abuse for about six decades. John Welsh says he barely walked in struggling with his addiction back in 2006. Now, years after his recovery, he's the chief operating officer. His job is to help secure funding to continue the mission. We're not here making money, as I like to say. We're here serving the, the community as a whole with an emphasis on keeping people like me capable of being a, a productive member of society. And you can learn more about this facility on KSAT.com. 514, about 74 degrees. And coming up next, how Xbox now letting you share game content in a new way. On a day without migraine, my whole body feels free because my eyes don't shy from the light, my head doesn't pound, and my stomach isn't nauseous. It's time for migraine prevention delivered differently through an IV infusion. It's time for Viepti, a preventive treatment for migraine in adults. Viepti is designed to start working fast and to last with a 30-minute IV infusion four times a year, delivering 100% of the medication directly into your bloodstream. The power of a Viepti infusion can help to reduce monthly migraine days. Some have fewer migraine days with the very first treatment. Don't take if allergic to Viepti. Common side effects are allergic reactions, stuffy nose, and scratchy throat. Allergic reactions include rash, swelling, trouble breathing, hives, and redness of the face. Choose to infuse with migraine prevention delivered differently. Talk to a neurologist or migraine specialist about Viempty. Learn how you could save. In today's Tech Bites, TikTokers will soon have a new way to cash in. TikTok plans to start sharing its ad revenue with top creators. They'll get a 50% cut when their videos run alongside certain ads, similar to YouTube, but creators must have at least 100,000 followers to qualify. Tech reports say Sonos will soon roll out its own voice assistant as an alternative to Amazon's Alexa and Google Assistant. According to The Verge, the voice assistant will be introduced as part of a software update coming in June. Finally, Xbox users have a new way to show off a bit. Players can now share their favorite gaming moments in a Snapchat-like story. You can also post a message to your friends' stories. The new feature is available now in Australia, but Microsoft says it will soon be in the U.S. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. It's been a pretty calm mo morning so far, Mark Seth. Thanks. Let's take a look around town and take that drive. You can see there's the Alamo Dome off 37 at Houston, 37 at Pecan Valley. Uh, we're not really seeing a whole lot of traffic yesterday. As we talked about, we saw maybe a few more folks as evidence right here, 35 at 37, looking a little bit busier than normal, but thankfully no big issues to talk about. However, for, just as a reminder for our friends over on the southwest side, there is a road closure there off old Pearsall Road between Covell Road and Excellence Drive due to a sinkhole that was reported by text.yes. 
yesterday. So we're still seeing that closure. Make sure you look for an alternative route this morning. But let's get the wide look at the map because at 519, no other issues to talk about. But we do want you to plan your day and make sure that you look for different routes or give yourself plenty of time because there is some curb, ro curb work, pardon me, that's taking place there at Lock Hill Summer Road right here in Bear County. Keep in mind that is current up until tomorrow. Drivers can expect that to start at 9 a.m. and wrap around 4 in the afternoon. That's when we'll see a single northbound main southbound part of me lane closure at the Wurzbach Parkway intersection. And of course, grab those phones, open your camera app for the latest on any closures that are taking place in your area. You can scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And of course, that will also have any updates on anything that could be impacting your drive time, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And we were talking about those storms that moved through late, late last night, early this morning. And in some places, like over there, Westover Hills, one of our regular viewers, Yvonne, said she picked up about a half an inch of rain, but it moved in very fast and moved out pretty fast. And that was the problem we were dealing with, you know, half an inch. Great amount of rain, but when it all comes at once, that can cause some uh, minor flooding problems. We did have flood advisories earlier this morning in and around Bear County. Nothing as of right now. And as a matter of fact, no rain is being picked up anywhere in uh, most of the metropolitan area. You just have a few of these leftover showers. Even maybe, well, there were a couple of lightning strikes there at that cell, which is moving just to the uh, north of Quero. These will continue to work their way off to the east throughout the rest of the morning. So we'll see somewhat of a lull in the action. Maybe Maybe just a leftover shower here or there. That's going to be about the extent of it. So as far as rain over there on the far southwest side of town, radar estimated it just over two inches of rain further out to the west inch and a half and then right around downtown just over a half an inch of rain. Same thing over there around 410 officially at the airport just shy of a quarter of an inch and then up in toward Live Oak almost an inch of rain. So this was just wonderful, obviously. More over there to the west around Medina Lake, almost two inches of rain and that whole swath that goes all the way out, basically out 90 in toward Del Rio, a little bit more than uh, two inches of rain and even in portions of uh, Kinney County, about three inches of rain. And on top of that, we had some really, really strong winds gusting uh, 50, 60 miles per hour in and around Bear County earlier this morning did cause some tree damage as well. And that may be responsible for some of the power outages that CPS is reporting. So we may still have a couple of leftover showers around this morning, especially off to the east. That's uh, taking into account here. Temperatures are going to be staying in the low to mid 70s, then getting up into the upper 70s. Still plenty of stubborn clouds this morning. Then we'll start to see a bit more sunshine. We make it up into the low 80s and a few of these thunderstorms are going to be popping up later on this afternoon, primarily up to the north. So here's the computer model. We keep a couple of uh, you know leftover showers around maybe this morning. And then as we go into the early afternoon hours, especially north of the hill country, north of Gillespie County even, we see some of those thunderstorms developing and this whole line is going to develop and work its way down to the east and to the southeast. We're going to be on the tail end of it. The majority of these storms are going to be further up to the north, but we will still have the chance for a couple of uh, stronger storms. As far as humidity is concerned, stays really humid throughout the day today. We do get somewhat of a break of, in it by tomorrow morning. That's going to allow temperatures to dip into the mid 60s and even in the afternoon, it'll be somewhat on the pleasant side, but don't get used to it because the humidity comes right back in here as we go into Saturday. So the forecast today, we are going to be seeing a couple leftover morning showers, then mostly cloudy skies, somewhat of a break in the action by noon. And then this afternoon, things are going to start to refire, especially further up to the north, 84 degrees for a high temperature. But we'll still have a couple of those uh, showers and thunderstorms in primarily the northern half of our viewing area and one or two potentially could become severe with uh, high winds and small hail being the biggest threats. Then tomorrow, again, we start off fairly pleasant, 66 degrees, get up to 96 in the afternoon, and then 100s over the weekend. As of right now, with that forecast, we would tie the record Saturday close to it on Sunday and stay in the uh, 90s. The normal high temperature, average high temperature, is mid-80s right now, so we're still going to be five, six, seven degrees above normal, even in the next week. So, Steph, whatever they're planning for you on Mother's Day Sunday, hopefully it's earlier Later, in the maybe. day versus later. It is, actually. Good, good. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be safe. Great plan. Hope you have an awesome Mother's Day. Thank you. Of course, 524, about 74 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Eminem, Dolly Parton, and more making the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame.
Hello, rock and roll fans. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has announced this year's inductees. The main performer category consists of Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo, Duran Duran, Eminem, Eurythmics, Dolly Parton, Lionel Richie, and Carly Simon. Other music notables will be honored in additional categories. The induction ceremony is set for November 5th in Los Angeles. Our mission is to protect dragons and to never hurt another one. That's what it means to be a dragon rider. The new season of Dragons the Nine Realms features new dangers and new characters, including Buzzsaw, voiced by Haley Joel Osment. You know, he starts from a very over-the-top place, and then as he gets more involved with the, uh, the dragon lore, uh, he really gets a... Uh, almost psychedelically inflated sense of himself and um, the sort of dragon lord that he thinks he can eventually become. Season two of Dragons the Nine Realms premieres today on Hulu and Peacock. There is only one law of the jungle. Don't mess with Mother Nature. Just in time for Mother's Day, the documentary series Mamas profiles the matriarchs of the animal kingdom and what they'll do to protect their young. Mamas debuts Friday on the Roku channel. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 528 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. death toll for COVID has now gone over 1 million. We'll take a look at the latest things being done to curb the virus. Plus, Mother's Day is coming up. We're going to show you how much people are planning to spend this year on mom. Making headlines this morning, U.S. once again seeing an uptick in coronavirus cases, averaging nearly 58,000 new cases per day. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, things looking pretty calm right now after a very noisy overnight. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, May 5th. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you got some sleep because it was loud last night. Yeah, we had some storms in the area. And Mike says we're going to shift from overnight storms to perhaps daytime storms today. Yes, later on this afternoon, we're going to see more showers and thunderstorms developing, mainly up to the north. We'll be sort of on the tail end of the system moving on through here, but we'll still be under the gun here in town and further up to the north. Right now, roads are still damp in places. You want to watch out for perhaps a couple of leftover spots where the the water is kind of standing because uh, in many places, like at the airport, it wasn't, you know, just a ton of rain, quarter of an inch, but it all came basically at once. And then even on the uh, far west side of town, picked up about two inches of rain. And again, a lot of that came almost all at once. Right now, all of the rain continues to work its way further off to the east. We may have even a couple of uh, light little showers in behind that are too light to be picked up on radar. So this gets sun out of here. We get so, sort of a lull in the action. Then things refire later on this afternoon. We will make it up to 80 today at noon. Still going to be windy. Winds out of the south, 10, 20 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. And then a few more showers and storms later on this afternoon. A high temperature up to 84 degrees. And just by looking at this graph and you see the darker shade of red, the greater threat for anything severe is further up to the north. So we're going to be on the tail end as this whole system again sweeps on through here. But large hail, a lot of uh, some reports of some pea sized, even a dime sized hail yesterday and last night with that storm that moved on through. But large hail and strong winds can be uh, expected with these storms. And yeah, even going back to that storm last night, we had wind gusts 50, 60 miles per hour here in town. We'll have to be on the lookout for this later on this afternoon. Then things uh, clear out and then, boy, that heat just gets cranked up going into tomorrow as well as the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? So far, so good, Mike. Doesn't look like we're spotting any major issues out on the roadways, but there are still some things to be aware of. Let's go ahead and take that drive around town really quick. 35 North at 410, 10 at Brazos, looking a little bit busier, and that's what we saw yesterday as well. We saw a lot more folks out in the morning than what we normally see this early, but just remember to take it easy. Uh, there again, 37 at Houston, but we are seeing some closures, particularly right there on the southwest side, right there off of 410 due to a sinkhole. Now, I just put this on our case at traffic page, so make sure to uh, stay updated for the latest, but that is due to that sinkhole that was reported by TxDOT yesterday. So start looking for those alternative routes. As the morning does go on, we'll make sure to do the same, but no need to rush right now, and no need to rush to the Alamo City because we are looking in great shape. Pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound with a 30-minute drive time. 23 on 87 coming in from Lavernia in the northbound lanes and a 28-minute drive time heading up from Floatisville. So again, we'll watch the roads closely, but as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Stephanie. 
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a woman is waking up in a hospital after starting her night at a fast food restaurant on the east side. San Antonio police say it had nothing to do with the food. Instead, it was a fight there that left her with serious injuries. Katrina Weber is live in the 100 block of South WW White Road near I-10. And Katrina, we understand there were more than fists involved. That's right. Police say that someone used an SUV to ram into that woman several times. Now, they say the dispute, which started in that restaurant, spilled out into the parking lot. Officers got here after it was all over, after 930 last night. They say witnesses told them that there were two groups of people involved in that dispute inside the McDonald's. As they were walking out, police say someone from the fight who was in an SUV hit the victim, slamming, in, slamming her into another SUV. Then they say that same driver rammed into a garbage dumpster with the victim still on the hood of the vehicle. That person was gone when police arrived. The woman was taken to a hospital and was in serious condition, according to officers. Now, I got a good look at that dumpster, and based on the way that it looks, it had to be a pretty powerful hit. There's a heavy metal door in front of it that is bent. Police are still looking for the driver. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. As of yesterday, the U.S. death toll from COVID reached 1 million. Now, most Americans live in counties deemed to have low COVID-19 community level. That means the CD does not recommend indoor mask wearing. However, as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the threat from the virus is ticking up. The U.S. is averaging nearly 58,000 new COVID-19 cases per day, according to Johns Hopkins University. That's roughly a 10% hike from the week before. I'm super tired. Um, I'm a little bit out of breath. Among those recently infected with the virus, people aboard a Carnival cruise ship that docked in Seattle earlier this week. It happened very suddenly and pretty wide. Others affected, numerous journalists. A source familiar with the matter says that includes ABC's Jonathan Carl, who tested positive for COVID-19 two days after attending the White House Correspondents' Dinner this past weekend. Also testing positive after the event, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who will maintain a virtual work schedule. He has not seen the president in several days, um, and he is not considered a close contact. The World Health Organization reported COVID-19 cases and deaths are at their lowest globally in more than two years. However, these trends, while welcome, don't tell the full story. Driven by Omicron subvariants, we are seeing an increase in reported cases in Americas and Africa. The Department of Health and Human Services says hospitalizations have gone up in 26 states over the past seven days, primarily in the eastern half of the country. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Authorities in New York State say a man is facing charges after trying to set a baby on fire. It happened Tuesday. The Seneca County Sheriff's Office responded to several fires inside a gas station southwest of Syracuse. When they went inside, they found a one-year-old covered in a flammable liquid. Authorities also found a four-year-old with head injuries inside the cab of a tractor trailer. Both children are expected to make full recoveries. Two men were immediately detained at the scene. One is now facing several charges, including attempted murder, arson, and endangering the welfare of a child. The other could be charged soon. A federal judge has dismissed a defamation and negligence lawsuit against actor Alec Baldwin. Now, the case stemmed from Baldwin's donation to the family of a Marine killed in August in a suicide bombing in Afghanistan. Now, he later learned that the Marine's sister had attended a Washington demonstration just before the violent January 6th Capitol insurrection. Now, according to the lawsuit, Baldwin began to message her on Instagram, voicing his disapproval. The judge in the case ruled that the plaintiffs had not proven that her court had jurisdiction over the case. A family attorney said they plan to refile the lawsuit. 538, about 74 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you how much Americans are expected to spend on Mother's Day gifts this weekend. And up next, how the latest technology is helping protect U.S. servicemen and women from suffering from traumatic brain injuries. And taking a look outside with a live cam, just humid out there. It's 74 degrees, but we are expecting some more rain in some areas later on. We'll be right back. 541, nearly half a million U.S. servicemen and women suffered a traumatic brain injury between the year 2000 and 2020. As Ursula Perry reports, Texas researchers are working to modernize the way we protect our service members. 
While many of us watch the action unfold on the big screen, Kaz Kowalski lived through it on the ground in Somalia during a firefight between U.S. troops and armed fighters. The person that left of me got hurt, the person one got hurt. I happened to just be in the right place at the right time at that point. But not every soldier was so lucky, and that's why engineers at Rice University are working on this. The first printable smart helmet. We employed the carbon printer to be able to print a very lightweight, strong material and then integrate our electronics into it. By using 3D printed nanomaterial exoskeletons, each helmet can be customized for the needs of each fighter. The lattice structure allows computers with health sensors, infrared cameras, and thermal maps to be built right into the helmet. So if there is anything approaching the soldier that is a threat, the helmet will tell you that. Those sensors, like those used in the NFL now, can not only tell if a person has suffered a concussion, but also how severe it is. And that's just the beginning. This is the Google Glass. This is the actual augmented reality display. I can actually see everybody's thermal profiles. Four cameras give a 360 infrared view. Artificial intelligence can detect threats and is capable of launching countermeasures. It's the future and we're trying to bring it forward. This project is being funded by the U.S. Navy. Right now, it's just a prototype. All of the cameras and the sensors are all going to fit inside a normal size helmet. And they're hoping that all this technology is going to be ready for testing by the end of the year. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 543, 74 degrees. And coming up next, we want you to meet a special pet aw, from the San Antonio Humane Society. We're back, and I think I'm in love. This is, uh, <laughs> tell me who this is again. This is... This is Mary. Mary. Uh, she's awesome. She's so beautiful, so cuddly. Yes. Uh, this is Kim with Humane Society. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me about Mary. So Mary is a two-month-old uh, retriever mix who okay. came into us. She has a, a sibling, Sarah, who um, was adopted. But Mary is just so super cuddly. She oh, my gosh, is. Justin, look. I know. I think this needs to happen. My daughters would absolutely... We love Mary. She seems like such a make a great uh, such a great family pet. Yeah, such yeah. a great family pet. And the great thing too is that um, when you adopt from us, they are spayed and neutered, mm -hmm. and they've had their first round of shots. So she's ready to go. That's amazing. That's awesome. And you guys got a promotion going on. We do. We've got a promotion. Well, all of our pets are twenty five dollars, and it starts May second through the fifteenth. Okay. Um, in addition to, we also need donations. So puppy pads, blankets, um, pillows anything towels anything that you're thinking of like spring cleaning some are getting into the mode you need to get rid of we can take them at our location and it's so important that those donations really do yes they do yeah. they do absolutely awesome okay so Mary needs a home and how can you resist that face <laughs> Come on. Uh, I know. beautiful beautiful so we'll put up the information there on your screen if you're interested 4804 Fredericksburg Road the number is 210-226-7461 thanks Kim <laughs> thank you and just a reminder, Mother's Day is just around the corner. The holiday is expected to hit another record when it comes to spending money on mom. The National Retail Federation expects people will end up spending nearly $32 billion this year. The agency also conducted surveys that suggest the top three gifts people are spending money on are greeting cards, flowers, and a special outing like dinner or brunch. 547, let's see how traffic's looking. All right, Stephen, how's it look so far? Well, I gave Mark that thumbs up. Right now, we haven't seen any trouble out there on TransGuide cameras just yet, but the morning is still pretty young. So let's get a look around town really quick. 410 at Broadway. It has looked a little busier, though. Although we haven't spotted major issues, we've been seeing some more, more vehicles out there on the roadways in comparison to other early mornings. But just remember to buckle up, be safe, and share the road with other drivers. Keep in mind, though, stalls are starting to pop up. We have this one here off of I-10 westbound at Callahan Road. But I really want to get to your attention when we give you the wide look at the map. Now, I haven't spotted anything on the trans guide cameras, but the northeast side right there at 1604 near Nacogdoches, our map is picking up a crash. Now, again, not seeing anything from the trans guide cameras. We're going to call them in just a minute and get some updates, but we still have that closure off of 410 due to a sinkhole that was reported by text yesterday. So start looking for those alternative route sets right there near old Pearsall Road. But other than that, we are in decent shape and plan your commute because they're off Loop 410 on the west side. There's also painting operations that are going on that should be wrapping up 
up on Monday, May 9th. It's from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so we still have one more night to go. Drivers, keep in mind, there's going to be that alternating main lane closure in both directions from Marbach Road to Ingram Road. One last look around town. Quiet road so far, but will it stay that way for long? That is a question we have. Mike. Thank you very much, sir, and it will stay pretty quiet for this morning, but then this afternoon things are going to start to uh, fire up once again. Right now, we don't really have much of anything, just a few leftover showers well off to the east right there, just to the north of Quero, and kind of uh, on that line down toward Goliad and further on down toward Beeville. Everything is sliding off to the east. Nothing is really in behind it. There could be a couple leftover showers, but uh, nothing is showing up on radar as of right now. You do want to watch out for a couple of damp spots on the roads and also overnight. Not only did we have some, the rain came down very, very, very quickly, and then we had some very strong winds on top of that. Obviously did some tree damage. We had a lot of reports of anywhere from 50 to 60 mile per hour winds out of the airport uh, reported close to 60 mile per hour winds at one point. Then also Lackland reported winds that were anywhere from about 55 to 60 miles per hour. Some of those wind gusts and we've Got a few pictures of some tree damage like this and also even further on out to the west. Uh Pretty much right along that line along 90 is where some of the, uh, the wind damage out toward Uvalde. There were some reports of not only uh, anywhere from quarter to almost golf ball size hail, but also some damage to some small uh, sheds and even around Hondo on top of that. So this uh, system developed out there in the mountains of Mexico, came in right around Del Rio and just basically drove right east on 90 and did produce severe weather. We had a severe thunderstorm warning here in town late, late last night, early this morning, and all that has moved on out of here, officially out at the airport, picked up just shy of a quarter of an inch of rain. But again, that all came at once, so that's why you want to watch out for maybe still some runoff or even some ponding on some of the roads since we got that rain just in one bucket getting dumped on us, basically. Temperatures are going to be staying in the low 70s this morning. Taking into account a stray leftover shower, especially off to the east, and we'll make it up into the upper 70s late this morning. Still a lot of stubborn clouds around here. We get pretty much a break in the action. Then things refire later on this afternoon. 84 for a high temperature. I'm keeping it down just a couple of degrees because of the extra humidity around here. A lot of moisture in the ground is going to add to the humidity. It takes a lot more energy to heat that up. And then also we'll have a few of those showers and thunderstorms developing later on this afternoon. Most of those are going to be further up to the north, which is what this computer model depicts. Now this one has a couple of leftover showers around here this morning. Again, just taking into account that uh, 10 20% chance of rain. Then later on this afternoon, way up there to the north, things really start to fire up and then this line develops and that's going to work its way down to the southeast. So most of the action is going to be north of our area, but we will still have a few of these showers and thunderstorms and even on the tail end of them, some can get even further down to the south. Now, as far as the humidity, very humid today and it is going to be dropping off somewhat tomorrow morning. That allows temperatures to drop down into the 60s, closer to a normal low temperature tomorrow morning as opposed to every other morning this week. And we'll stay pretty pleasant as far as the humidity tomorrow afternoon. Don't get used to it because we get that morning humidity coming back in here very quickly. As far as the severe threat, most of that, again, is going to be further up to the north. But one or two of those storms, just an isolated one or two of them, could become reach severe levels with high winds over 60 miles per hour or basically golf ball sized hail. 80 at noon, most of the cloudy skies and then a high temperature today, 84 degrees. So we're still going to be on the above normal side by a couple of degrees and then a couple of showers, a few thunderstorms. Most most of those are going to be further up to the north, but can't completely rule it out here in town. Tomorrow, mid 60s, not necessarily jacket weather in the morning, but much cooler compared to what we've had this week and what we're going to be having this weekend. And then we make it up to 96 tomorrow, 100 still over the weekend. Very hot weekend. Hot on Mother's Day. Yes, indeed. Thank, Thank you, Mike. 553, about 74 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3206, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 7200, Fireball 3. Cash 5 numbers 29, 11, 15, 29, Lotto Texas 6, 14, 27, 28, 33, and 40. And Powerball, let's take a look. Jackpot's up to $51 million, 37, 39, 55, 63, 69. Powerball 23, Power Play 2. Mega is up to $70 million for tomorrow night's drawing.
Good morning. Coming up, a night of terror in the plains. Severe storms, supercells, the tornadoes, all the hail, the flash flooding, so much to cover here. And two more days of a threat. I will show you where that goes. And then the growing political fallout from the Supreme Court leak of that draft opinion about Roe v. Wade as the investigation gets underway. And Amber Heard finally taking a stand in her bombshell defamation case with ex-Johnny Depp. Why her testimony is so important to this case. That and so much more right here on GMA. A hey, reminder, Election Day is Saturday. We have everything you need to know about the propositions on the ballot. That includes some bonds, constitutional amendments, and special proposals. Some of the measures will affect property taxes. We lay it all out for you on ksat.com. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, shot, cut up, tied up, and left for dead on a country road. Sheriff's deputies here in Bear County say they have the men who committed these crimes against another man last month in custody. Plus, a woman using her own experience to help other amputees to tackle and conquer new challenges to achieve new heights. And instead of lighting up the night sky, fireworks being blamed for igniting a two alarm fire on the west side that left several people without a home. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with details on that. And Stephen Cavazos is monitoring traffic as things are off and running at 410 in Fredericksburg. There is Loop 410 at Broadway. And it could be a stormy afternoon. We'll talk to Mike coming up at the top of the hour. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cuoto. This is what's left of a building inside an apartment community on the city's west side. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you everything we've been able to learn. Chief Justice of the Supreme Court calling for an investigation into the leak causing concerns across the nation and here in San Antonio about uh, abortion rights. That's straight ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we hope you got some sleep overnight. It was definitely noisy, but right now just humid at 74 degrees. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. That's right. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great week so far. And as far as today, uh, there might be some showers in some areas. That's right. Mike says we're on storm alert. We had some storms move through where they woke some of us up right before midnight last night. Yeah, it came in really quick, really hard, really heavy. Mm -hmm. um, dumped a lot of rain, especially on the, the west side of town and west side of Bear County, upwards of an inch and a half, two inches even more than that, a quarter of an inch officially out there at the airport, and then 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So we did have um, a lot of uh, reports of some tree damage and everything too and some hail too yeah peace size hail. i think i heard some okay those storms woke me up in my house sure. and then especially uh, further on out to the west mm -hmm. as these storms moved on through and then later on this afternoon we are going to have more the majority are going to be further to the north but we still have to be on the lookout here looks like roads have uh pretty much dried out thanks to uh, some of the traffic there. We had uh, we haven't had any rain being picked up out there at the airport in a while since those storms moved on through. As a matter of fact, everything is well off any detectable rain. Now there's one small cell right down there just popped up around Pearsall. Everything is sliding off to the east and then more of it further off to the east. So one or two showers left over this morning. Not really any big deal uh, in and around the area this morning, but then later on this afternoon. 75 here in town, 73 Ball Verde, and then low 70s in portions of the hill country. And yep, we've got a ton of humidity, not just in the atmosphere, but also all that moisture in the ground is adding to the mugginess out there. And that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the day today. As far as the uh, severe threat. One or two of those isolated storms may become strong to potentially severe high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats. But then the biggest threat, the greatest threat is further up I-35, Austin, up toward College Station and further north of there. So we're kind of on the tail end of this. So that's why it's just the, the isolated variety. But again, one or two of them may be on the strong side and you may get some decent rain as well from any of those storms that do happen to pop up. 72 degrees and we'll fluctuate maybe a few degrees this morning. Gusty winds out of the south, 10, 20 miles per hour and then gusting anywhere from 25 close to 30 miles per hour, obviously stronger in and around any storms that do happen to develop 80 at noon today and then a high temperature we make it up to 84 with a few of those showers and thunderstorms. Now we will get somewhat of a break in the humidity tomorrow in the morning. That's going to allow temperatures to actually dip down into the 60s closer to normal. It's not going to last long and then we're still looking at a sizzling weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Good morning, Mike. 603 right now. We are seeing some flashing lights at 37 at 410. Let's get a wider look from Trans Guide. We can see uh, that that's somewhere off of the interstate there. Not sure exactly what's causing that at this hour. However, we want drivers to stay alert. It has been a busier morning. morning 
happening on the roadways in terms of traffic, but thankfully no major issues to report just yet. We're going to find out what's going on there, but let's start with that wide look at the map because as I just mentioned, not a whole lot of issues to talk about, but we have to bring you in there to the southwest side. Uh, we'll get to that in actually just a moment. Pardon me. We have to start first here off of I-10 westbound at Callahan Road. That stall still being reported by tech stop, but not causing issues and we're not too worried about it. Here is where we're starting to see some issues though. Southwest side, as I mentioned right now, old Pearsall Road at Five Palms Drive. There is a crash that's reported there, but as in that same direction, a little bit further down on old Pearsall, we still have that closure due to a sinkhole that was reported by TxDOT yesterday. So drivers remain alert. Start looking for those different routes this morning. Thankfully, no need to rush out the door. And if your destination is the Alamo City, you're in luck. Fifth, 25 minute drive time, though, coming in from Bernie downtown on those westbound lane, eastbound lanes of I-10. Pardon me. 29 minutes on 281 southbound from Bulverde and looking at 27 minutes on 35 southbound as well. So no need to rush out the door, especially if your destination is San Antonio. But we're going to find out what's going on here and see how that impacts your drive time. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now let's look at the CPS outage map. Right now we are looking at 622 total customers affected. Now this is numbers moving down and we were at about 1,000 earlier this morning. Now of course, crews are working to restore that power, so we'll continue to monitor these outages. Overnight, we hear they were upwards of 7,000 customers without power. Well, new this morning, San Antonio Fire Department responding to a two alarm blaze at an apartment building on the city's northwest side. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live now. And Good morning, Jonathan. Can you give us an update? Good morning, Stephanie. Uh, nobody was hurt in this fire or as a result of the fire. We're learning a firefighter ha uh, hurt his knee. He was treated by EMS on scene. But let me tell you, Mark and Stephanie, this right here behind me is a 32 unit apartment. 23 of them were occupied. Everyone inside displaced this morning. Let's take a look at the video that shows the scene last night. Shortly after nine o'clock, San Antonio firefighters were called out to the Ass Fire Apartments on the 1800 block of Bandera Road and Hillcrest. First in crews found heavy fire in one unit. Uh, they immediately upgraded it to a second alarm for our department protocols with a, a building this size. Two of the apartments or four of the apartments have major damage, but we are told firefighters were able to contain the flames to just this building. The Red Cross did make the scene. They say property management is assisting in relocating everyone affected. Now, Mark, Stephanie, Cruz on scene tell us there were kids out in the parking lot playing with fireworks, but the cause of the fire still remains under investigation. Reporting from the West Side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you very much. Gas station out of commission for a while after a fire forced an employee to call the fire department. It happened around 615 last night. Smoke began to fill up that building in the 400 block of New Laredo Highway near Fay Avenue and West South Cross. Here's video from the scene. The store was occupied at the time. Everyone was able to get out. It took fire crews about two hours to actually find the fire with, uh, with the store's size. Crews located the fire in the attic and put it out. The fire's under investigation. No one was hurt. And now to the latest on a shooting at an apartment complex on the southeast side. That suspect is still on the run, and a man who was shot in the head has died. Police say 30-year-old Rafael Jesus Lopez was shot in a parking lot at a complex on Baltimore Drive and Dollar Hyde. They say Lopez was talking with a group of men when one of them pulled a gun and fired. Right now, investigators are looking for a beige-colored Hyundai Elantra with broken windows that may have been at that scene. Two men accused of leaving a man bloodied and hogtied on an East Bear County road back in April are now in custody. Sheriff Salazar says it was a heinous murder attempt and the victim survived. These two men accused of committing the crime, 36-year-old Daryl King and 24-year-old Uriah Huffman. The 24-year-old victim suffered multiple gunshot and stab wounds. The sheriff says the men left them for dead on Lavernia Road tied up back on April 23rd. The sheriff believes all three may have been involved in the drug trade. It just shows me the total lack of regard for human life that these two suspects seem to have. Uh, and they're, they're certainly dangerous people that were happy to get off the streets. Sheriff thinks others may have been involved. They do have people of interest, but no other suspects yet. And this morning, new security fencing up at the U.S. Supreme Court, where crowds have been gathering all week following the leak of that draft opinion on abortion rights. This as the high court's chief justice is calling for a leak investigation, and the apparent author of that draft opinion is canceling an appearance. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with a look at the latest. 
from coast to coast, days of large and loud abortion rights demonstrations. Abortion has got to go! In downtown Los Angeles, police say abortion rights protests turned violent early Wednesday, leaving one officer injured. And overnight, crews setting up security fencing around the U.S. Supreme Court complex, a level of precaution seen after the January 6th Capitol attack. It comes amid rising tensions after this week's leak of a draft opinion on a pending abortion rights case. That draft appearing to signal the conservative-leaning court could be close to overturning Roe v. Wade, the near 50-year-old Supreme Court decision granting a right to legal abortion in the U.S. Though not a final opinion, President Biden has called the draft opinion radical. What happens if you have a state ch changes the law saying that that, that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children. Is that, is that legit under the way the, the decision is written? The president also warning of a wider impact on other rights. What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history. In recent American history. ABC's Terry Moran says the president and some legal scholars are raising concerns about key arguments in the draft and possible consequences. There were a lot, of, a lot of gay marriages when the Constitution was written, or interracial marriages. Contraceptives were illegal. And they say that Alito's argument could cut those rights down no matter what he says if someone brings a challenge to them. Late Wednesday, word Justice Samuel Alito, the author of that draft opinion, has canceled a judicial conference appearance set for today, a Supreme Court spokeswoman giving no reason as to why. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, the possibility of Roe versus Wade being overturned by the high court has some worried about the president it will sit. Now, looking at the draft opinion, League Justice Samuel Alito writes Roe versus Wade must be overruled because, quote, the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, unquote. The constitutionality wording has Robert Salcido Jr. with Pride Center SA worried about what this will mean for the the right to marriage equality. You're taking away the rights of folks and their opportunity and their ability to make decisions on their own. Uh, it, it, sets, it sets a dangerous precedent. And David Crockett with Trinity University disagrees. He sees the issues as completely separate and doesn't think the court would have the desire or backing to take on every social issue. I'm not sure I would see then the court go further and do something like uh, reverse the, uh, the gay marriage decision a few years ago. I don't know that the numbers are there for that. And in this draft, Justice Alito wrote, quote, nothing on this opinion should be understood to cast doubt on precedents that do not concern abortion, unquote. The dangers and effects of substance abuse can be felt financially, physically, and emotionally, not just for the abuser, but their family and the community. Lifetime Recovery, a local nonprofit, has been trying to help San Antonio families end the cycle of abuse for about six decades. John Wells says he barely walked in struggling with his addiction back in 2006. Now, years later, he's the chief operating officer, and his job is to help secure funding to continue their mission. We're not here making money, as I like to say. We're here serving the, the community as a whole with an emphasis on keeping people like me capable of being a, a productive member of society. The nonprofit has a contract with Bear County to provide recovery support to people who are in and out of jail due to substance abuse and are not criminals. You can learn more about the facility on our website at ksat.com. And time now, 612 and 74 degrees for now. TikTok plans to start sharing its ad revenue with top creators. Details coming up. And still to come, a section of the Southwest Side Road will be closed until further notice. We're going to tell you exactly where and why after the break. Outside with live cam, a stormy night for many of you. And Mike has us on alert for later on today for another possible round of showers and storms. Could any of them be strong to severe? We'll check with him and we'll check on the morning commute with Stephen coming up. 
welcome back. It is 616. TxDOT wants to help you avoid a bump in the road by closing a section of Old Pearsall Road. That section is between Loop 1604 and Loop 410 on the city's southwest side. Now, road crews are still making repairs to a sinkhole. TxDOT has said that section of the roadway will be closed until further notice. TxDOT says SAWS looked into the possibility that a water line caused that damage. However, SAWS uh, reports that they didn't find any evidence of that and an exact cause has not been released. Well, Fiesta has come and gone here in San Antonio. If you haven't checked out the counter or don't know, it's Cinco de Mayo. Every year, May 5th, Americans celebrate Mexican-American heritage and pride. The United States Congress issued a proclamation in 2005 calling on Americans to observe Cinco de Mayo. Most people do so by enjoying a Mexican-themed meal and drinks. And looking at the trans guy cameras, things look pretty okay right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. They're pretty okay. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> safe to say. Let's get a look around town, see how that morning is shaping up for this Thursday. Uh, 37 at Houston. I've not really seen a lot of traffic there, but that has basically been the situation we've been seeing. It's just a few more vehicles out than we normally would. 35 at 37. The morning is moving, but be on the lookout because we saw some flashing lights a little bit earlier. We're going to go ahead and start over here on the southeast. Uh, pardon me, 35 north. Uh, uh, right there off of uh, State Highway 46. Pardon me. Uh, this is out toward New Braunfels. Now, TxDOT reported a crash out there a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, didn't see anything on the trans guide cameras, and it's no longer listed on the TxDOT site, so we're going to clear that from our map. So uh, just watch out either which way, but let's take that drive down over here to the southeast side because earlier we did see some flashing lights out over there. That was a stall that was reported, and we're still seeing those flashing lights, but it's not causing major issues for drivers. But something that we just talked about was that closure over there off of 410 by 410 Old Pearsall Road due to that sinkhole. Keep in mind that is between Coville Road and there at Excellence Drive, and we are going to see that closure at least until TxDOT tells us otherwise. So we're going to have that listed and also be on the lookout. There's still some bridge work taking place off 37 in Atascosa County. Keep in mind that is current till Thursday, May 5th. That should wrap today, and that will be wrapping around 5 in the afternoon. Drivers expect a single northbound main lane closure at the Atascosa River. Other than that, the morning is moving, guys. Thank Very you, Stephen. Good. Yeah, and maybe a light rain jacket for some of the students. That the wouldn't be a bad idea. Grab an umbrella as well. Uh, you may need, you know, just keep it handy this morning. We've got a couple of showers that are showing up, but any more um, potentially heavy storms are not going to be till later on this afternoon. 72 degrees this morning, so we will fluctuate a degree or two, not really dropping down all that much. Couple leftover showers. Going to show you radar in just a moment. And then after school today, 84 degrees, a few showers and thunderstorms. It's going to be windy again. Winds out of the south 10 20 miles per hour gusting on top of that but notice how i've got the uh, little right there in parentheses most of that is going to be up to the north that's where the the greatest threat for any showers thunderstorms and or any potential severe storms speaking of which we did have some wind gusts in the overnight hours with those storms that moved through 50 60 miles per hour on the uh on the, the west side of town southwest side over there by lackland also up by the airport and of course we did get a few pictures of some tree damage some trees that were knocked down by those straight line winds and even heading on out to the west as that storm moved on through we saw more of that uh, that tree damage all right as far as estimated rainfall from the radar over there on the southwest side of town, a little bit more than two inches of rain over just right around Helotus, inch and a half. And downtown, just over half an inch of rain officially out at the airport, quarter of an inch of rain. But the problem was all of this came basically all at once. And that's why in the overnight hours there was a flood advisory posted for Bear County. So just watch out for maybe some ponding left over here and there in some low spots. Further on out to the west around Medina Lake, two inches of rain. And then again, it was that swath all the way from Bear County right along Highway 90 all the way over toward Del Rio inch inch and a half two, three inches worth of rain. So yes, it was definitely some welcome rain. Unfortunately, we did have some severe weather, those high winds as well as some reports of hail at all the way from San Antonio back out to the west right now. We've got a few of these uh, showers and going to be on the lookout right here around Pleasanton. That has started to sort of intensify as far as the rainfall. You can see that one red spot right there, and we're not seeing any lightning strikes from that, but I wouldn't be surprised if that does generate a couple of the lightning strikes. And then even in southern Wilson County, we've got a few of those showers right there and a few more off to the east. Everything's continuing to work its way off to the east. So these are the leftovers, and then we'll have more, like I said, firing up later on today. Temperatures will stay 
basically steady this morning. Mid low 70s fluctuate a couple of degrees. 20% chance for one or two of those leftover showers, even a stray thunderstorm. And then we will make it up to 80 today at noon and only get into the mid 80s. Just about a normal high temperature. As a matter of fact, 84 is the normal high temperature later on with more showers and some thunderstorms around here. Computer model and this does, I think, a very good job depicting what's going to be happening. A few of those showers, maybe a thunderstorm later on this morning. Then we get into the afternoon hours and that's when things really start to uh, cook up here to the north, north of Austin, and that line then starts to form up. We're going to be on the tail end of it in our northern counties, maybe even just sort of grazing by Bear County, but there's still going to be the chance that one or two of those could become potentially severe, but obviously the majority is going to be well off to the uh, north and to the northeast. Storm Prediction Center has an isolated strong to severe storm from anywhere lakey uh, just to the east of uh, Rock Springs and then including Hondo, San Antonio and off to the east. But the greatest threat further up to the north again, large hail and strong winds are going to be the, the biggest threats with that. Going back 12 hours as this loops on through again, those storms developed over there around Del Rio and over in Mexico and just worked right there along Highway 90. And we did have that uh, report of severe weather or the severe thunderstorm warning, I should say, was issued just before mid night this morning, 80 today at noon, most of the cloudy skies and a couple leftover showers around this morning. And then 84 for a high temperature later on today. A few showers, a couple of thunderstorms, primarily up to the north. That doesn't mean we won't see anything here in town. Do have a small chance for that. And then tomorrow we get a somewhat of a break in the humidity, 66 degrees and then up to 96 in the afternoon, 100 over the weekend. So it's going to be Gorchin over the weekend. Okay, thank you, Mike. 623, about 74 degrees. And just ahead, if you don't like Amazon's Alexa or you don't like that Google Assistant, another option is about to hit the market. On a day without migraine, my whole body feels free because my eyes don't shy from the light, my head doesn't pound, and my stomach isn't nauseous. It's time for migraine prevention delivered differently through an IV infusion. It's time for Viepti, a preventive treatment for migraine in adults. Viepti is designed to start working fast and to last with a 30-minute IV infusion four times a year, delivering 100% of the medication directly into your bloodstream. The power of a Viepti infusion can help to reduce monthly migraine days. Some have fewer migraine days with the very first treatment. Don't take if allergic to Viepti. Common side effects are allergic reactions, stuffy nose, and scratchy throat. Allergic reactions include rash, swelling, trouble breathing, hives, and redness of the face. Choose to infuse with migraine prevention delivered differently. Talk to a neurologist or migraine specialist about Biempty. Learn how you could save. In today's Tech Bytes, TikTokers will soon have a new way to cash in. TikTok plans to start sharing ad revenue with top creators. They'll get a 50% cut when their videos run alongside certain ads similar to YouTube, but creators must have at least 100,000 followers to qualify. And tech reports say Sonos will soon roll out its own voice assistant as an alternative to Amazon's Alexa and Google Assistant. According to The Verge, the voice assistant will be introduced as part of a software update coming in June. 627, about 74 degrees. And coming up in the next half hour, Metro Health changing the risk meter for COVID in our area. What our risk level is now with a new change. SAPD says a woman is deliberately hit by an SUV and pinned against a dumpster. Katrina Weber is joining us live from the scene where this happened with all the details next. And millions of Americans are on alert, embracing for another round of severe storms today. The latest images of tornadoes ripping through Oklahoma. We are on storm alert, too. Not quite to that extent, but Mike is on the lookout for possible afternoon showers and storms. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, Cinco de Mayo. Yes, Thursday, May 5th. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a noisy overnight, but this morning, humid for now. Mike, do we have any storms out there right now? Or are we done for the moment? No, no lightning is being detected as of right now. We've got a couple of spots that have just popped up in mm -hmm. Edisco. So kind of going to show you that in a second. Now, as far as storms later on today, we're going to be sort of on the tail end of a, uh, a line of potentially severe storms, which you think, okay, we're on the tail end. We're not going to get anything. Well, 
yesterday and last night, we weren't even included in the risk for anything severe. And of course, we did have that one thunderstorm cell that moved through late, late last night, early this morning. Right now, the picture, as you can see, it is just murky out there. Road is fairly dry. The traffic's been kind of drying things out after we had that rain last night. It picked up just about a quarter of an inch out there at the airport. 0.23 inches to be exact. 75 right now, dew point 72. So with that uh, amount of moisture in the atmosphere, which that measures, yeah, it's really humid out there. Winds out of the south primarily at about nine miles per hour. All right, here's radar and things had continue to work their way off to the east and now these uh, couple little spots they're not producing any lightning as of yet but just to the south of Pleasanton and just now moving into Atascosa County there from Frio County everything is sliding up to the northeast at 25 27 miles per hour so a decent little quick downpour here and there and then off to the east we've got a couple of showers left over around Goliad basically light to moderate down there right around Goliad so this is not going to be any any huge rain event this morning, but again, later on this afternoon, we'll have to be on the lookout. Mold is on the low side. It's going to be interesting to see with all this moisture around what the updated count, which comes out in about 45 minutes or so, indicates. And then everything else is on the low side as well, including oak. So we may finally be getting out of that season. Here's what the Storm Prediction Center has. An isolated, potentially severe storm anywhere from, say, Kerrville, Bandera, down in towards San Antonio and off to the east. But the majority is going to be further up to the north. So again, we're sort of on the tail end of this, if you will. But we're still somewhat under the gun, although it will be on the isolated variety. A couple leftover showers around here this morning, and then we get break in the action. Then things refire later on today. Again, showers, storms, mainly to the north. Tomorrow, um, dare I say, call it cooler, will be mid 60s, closer to a normal low temperature. Then it really heats up in the afternoon, and it's going to get even hotter as we go on into the weekend, sizzling with plenty of sunshine, triple digits over the weekend. All the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? All is well over here, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways. Trans guide showing just a busier commute, 410 at Fredericksburg. Let's get that wider look and see how things are shaping up this morning. There's 410 at Broadway. Uh, again, what we've really been seeing throughout the morning is just more traffic than anything, but we do know that there's issues still out there that we want our drivers to be alert of. And if you have to head out in the next few moments, here's what you can expect. Taking you right to the map, 37 southbound at Loop 410. TxDOT still reporting a stalled vehicle out in that area. Spot some flashing lights out over there from the corner of my eye at these trans guide cameras, but thankfully we're not seeing a slowdown reflected on our map. But we still have this closure over here off of Old Pearsall Road. We told you about it throughout the show and we're going to remind you again. Look for those alternative routes because that closure is there at Old Pearsall between Covell Road and Excellence Drive. Now keep in mind, TxDOT did report a sinkhole yesterday and that closure is in place until further notice. So we will continue to remind you about that. But wide look at the map shows no other issues to talk about just yet. But we know that can quickly change when morning rush gets here. But no need to rush to the Alamo City. We are green across the board, but can't say the same for our friends up 281 off Bolverde, a 29 minute drive time in those southbound lanes. But keep in mind that's due to some construction right there by Overlook Parkway. Other than that morning has shaped up to be pretty nice so far, but we'll see how it, how long it lasts and have more updates coming up right here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Due to last night's storms, we saw some power outages this morning. Right now, it's down to about 500 customers, mainly in central and western Bear County, but it was upwards of 7,000 customers affected in the overnight hours. We'll continue to monitor these outages for you. And this morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is searching for a 15-year-old girl. Yvette Williams was last seen in the 3000 block of Battle Cry in West Bear County on Tuesday around 10 p.m. She was wearing a red shirt and red shorts with black lettering. She has a nose piercing and wears black glasses. If you know where she is, you're asked to contact the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The number on your screen now is 210-335-6000. You can also email any information to missing persons at Bear org and san antonio police and crime stoppers are asking for your help in a murder case from 11 years ago the body of 32 year christopher johnson was found may 5th 2011 in a vacant field off ferris avenue near mlk on the east side officers tell us that he was shot and killed and that his red ford mustang was found damaged beyond repair at a different location if you have any information that can help investigators to find the person responsible for this murder you're asked to call 210 224 stop 
And new this morning, San Antonio firefighters responded to heavy flames burning through a west side apartment building. Jonathan Cota joined us live. Jonathan, was anyone hurt out there? Good morning, Mark. And uh, thankfully, no, we are learning that a firefighter hurt his knee on scene. He was treated by EMS, but as a result of the fire, nobody was hurt. That we do know for certain. But let me tell you, Mark and Stephanie, this is a 32 unit apartment building. 23 of those units were occupied. Everyone here displaced this morning. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like last night. We know San Antonio firefighters were called out shortly after nine o'clock to the Aspire Apartments. That's an apartment community on the 1800 block of Bandera and Hillcrest. First in crews found heavy fire in one unit. Uh, they immediately upgraded it to a second alarm for our department protocols with a, a building this size. Now, four of the apartments have major damage, but we are told firefighters were able to contain the flames to just this building. The Red Cross did make the scene. They say property management is working with those displays to relocate them right now. Crews are telling us they did see kids with fireworks on the property. But again, the cause of this fire remains under investigation. Reporting from the West Side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the pandemic, Metro Health has changed the risk meter here at home to show three categories instead of five that they had before. Previous meter had us listed on the mild risk level. We're now currently in the low risk category, according to the new meter. Our seven day average, 131 cases per day, no new deaths reported. And as of last night, Metro Health confirmed 66 COVID patients in local hospitals. Out of that breaking news overnight, tornadoes hitting the Great Plains. The images are just coming in from Oklahoma, and millions of Americans are on alert for more severe storms today. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the details. This morning, widespread damage is being reported in Seminole, Oklahoma, after multiple tornadoes hit near the Texas border. I'm looking out in front of me, and I'm seeing a, a lot more damage as we continue to fly over the town. Um, this, this was a, a, a very strong storm. One reported tornado making a direct hit on downtown Seminole, damaging buildings and tearing down power lines. Ten people were trapped inside this storm shelter after debris fell on top of it. All of them, including a baby, reportedly made it out safely. This is bricks that they're getting out of the road, and it's bricks from this building right here. Uh, we're not really sure what kind of building it, is, it was. Uh, it's obviously really dark out here, so we can't tell, but that is the building that's destroyed. This is the roof to that building. It's completely gone. It's on the ground now. That's where the tornado is right now. The strong wind sending these marijuana plants sky high, tearing apart the grow houses at a marijuana farm. Tornadoes have hit the U.S. in record numbers so far this year. 218 reported in March alone, the highest number ever for that month before tornado season even technically began. New video show the devastating tornado that hit Andover, Kansas last week, damaging more than 1,000 buildings. The twister packing winds up to 155 miles per hour. The surveillance video showing the tornado just missing City Hall. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 639, 74 degrees. One woman lost her leg when she was run over by a drunk driver. However, that did not stop her. Just to have what she's doing to help other amputees keep moving. And welcome back. It is 643. According to the Amputee Coalition, 185,000 amputations occur each year in the U.S. More than three and a half million people will be living with limb loss by the year 2050. But learning to live without an arm or a leg can be challenging and even soul crushing, but it doesn't have to be. R.J. Marquez introduces us to one woman who's been changing the lives of amputees for more than two decades. I had just turned 17. Mona Patel remembers that day vividly on the campus of California Polytech. That was the day a drunk driver changed the course of her life forever. I flew up 12 feet, across 6 feet. His car kept going and I landed back on his car. And the second impact, he pinned me between his car and a metal railing. That's pretty much what smashed the, the lower leg and foot. Fast forward seven years and 21 surgeries later, Mona opted to have her leg amputated below the knee. I was at a crossroads and I looked for a support group, but I couldn't find one. Mona vowed that she would be the one to help others facing life after losing a limb. And for more than 25 years, she has kept her promise. After four failed knee replacements, I sought out a surgeon to remove it. 
no matter what, it changes your life. After meeting Mona, Stephanie Richardson knew she made the right decision. And Mona turned to me and she said, I never met anybody yet who opted to cut it off and regretted it later. So, you know, and it just changed everything for me. And that's what Mona does. With her nonprofit, the San Antonio Amputee Foundation, as a licensed clinical social worker, she meets one-on-one -on -one before an amputation and after to show patients what their future can be. Just yesterday, I think I told three new amputees that you have to remember that your spirit, your love, your heart it did not live in that foot or that leg that was amputated. It's in here. She also sees the power of peer support groups and makes it okay to ask for help. Another key component when overcoming adversity, setting goals. We always have to be striving for something bigger and better. A major goal for Mona and several other amputees is climbing 19,340 feet to the top of Kilimanjaro. You can tackle and climb any summit, you know, in, in your life. Her first question to me was, what mountain do you want to climb? Not only does the San Antonio Amputee Foundation work one-on-one -on -one to give amputees guidance and help them navigate the medical system, they also match amputees with other amputees for support and challenge them with adaptive sporting programs like skiing, riding horses, and cycling. As for Mona, her next goal is to hike the highest peak in every state. So far, she's reached the top of 14 mountains. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 646. And looking at the trans guy cameras, looks like things are moving, Stephen. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely moving, Mark said. Let's get a look at around town. There's 90 West at Zazamoto getting that wider look at trans guide. Oh, uh, we're just seeing busier traffic from these shots. Thankfully, nothing major yet, but we do want you to bring your attention over to uh, the over up here towards 35 at New Braunfels in the southbound lanes at 337. There is a crash that's been reported by TxDOT. We are not able to pinpoint exactly what's going on there, but we'll find out and bring you those updates as the morning does go on. Let's take you back into town because we want you to stay alert. There is some road road debris, pardon me, detected off I-10 westbound at Crossroads Boulevard. It's not causing issues for drivers in that area, but something to be alert of. And of course, check those vehicles and watch for those stranded drivers out there. 37 southbound at Loop 410. We still have that stall detected, but getting the wide look at the map. Thankfully, no major issues, just those slowdowns, particularly up there on 281, but that's normal. Other than that, the morning is moving for the latest in the forecast. Let's check in with Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Of course, you may have been awakened by some of those uh, big storms that moved through late last night, and then things really started to uh, to settle down in behind that. And now things have once again started to uh, to fire back up, and uh, that's you can see down here right around uh, Wilson County as well as Atascosa County. Just a couple of small cells. They're moving off to the uh, northeast at about 25 to 27 miles per hour. Decent downpour. It's not very big, moving at a fairly good clip, so it's not just going to sit there in one spot. And we're not detecting any lightning from those. Might see a couple of uh, lightning strikes, just the way those are, are starting to uh, grow ever so slightly. But these will continue to work their way on out of here. And then we get somewhat of a lull in the action. Then we start to see more potentially severe storms. Of course, last night, a lot of folks saw some uh, small hail. This is up there around uh, Fair Oaks Ranch and even sounded like near downtown. There may have been some pea sized hail and then further on out to the west over around you Valley. There were some poor reports of uh, golf ball sized hail. That's a possibility again this afternoon with some of those thunderstorms. This morning temperatures will stay pretty steady right around the low mid 70s. A couple of leftover showers this morning and then like I said, we get sort of a, a break in the action. We're already kind of getting into that break in the action right now. 80 at noon and then we make it up into the mid 80s. That's actually the normal high temperature, 84 degrees and a 30% chance for more of those showers and thunderstorms later on today. So rapid update computer model has those couple of showers scattered about the area this morning and then by early afternoon, that's when the big storms start to fire up and of course, well north of Austin and that kind of that line starts to fill in further on down to the south, works its way across our northern counties throughout the late afternoon hours. The majority of anything potentially severe is going to be further on up to the north, Austin uh, College Station north of there. Just a few isolated ones, portions of the hill country in and around town. Few and far between at most, but again, anything that does pop up could have some high winds as well as some large hail and potentially isolated heavy downpours. And that's going to be 
the end of the rain chances as far as the next couple of days, because then after that, things then start to uh, clear on out and we get some very hot temperatures coming on in here. Going back 12 hours, there's that thunderstorm cell. Again, it worked its way just right along 90 from Del Rio and did produce some severe weather even here in town. Like I said, about uh, well, just shy of a quarter of an inch of rain out there at the airport, but even the west side of San Antonio picked up anywhere from an inch, inch and a half to, uh, to two inches of rain as that moved on through. Further on up to the north, once again, now we had reports of numerous severe storms yesterday up around the uh, Oklahoma, Texas state line, and then that's moving off to the east. So more severe weather. If you have any travel plans, uh, maybe flying through Memphis today, you want to check ahead with that. As a matter of fact, uh, Mark and I were talking earlier. It said that a bunch of C-17s from one of the Air Force bases up there in Oklahoma came down here to avoid all of that uh, severe weather yesterday. It's kind of like parking your car in the garage. They just got it out of harm's way. 80 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And then, of course, we've got the few showers scattered about this morning and then 84 for a high temperature later on today. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, mainly to the north. Still can't, we're not completely out of the woods here in town. Tomorrow, 66. Normal low temperature, 63. So closer to where we should be, but then... Boy, we have a big warm up throughout the day. Humidity is going to be OK tomorrow, 96, but we'll have a lot of morning humidity dropping somewhat in the afternoon, 100 over the weekend. Yeah, they got those jets out of uh, Altus Air Force Base up in Oklahoma. Oh. Probably a smart move, right? Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, 651, about 74 degrees on your Cinco de Mayo. And heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and some cancers. These are all leading causes of early preventable death in the U.S. and conditions facing millions of Americans who are obese. Tomorrow on GMSA, why weight loss surgery could be a key to reducing those risks. Outside with live cam, we'll wrap up GMSA after this break. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. It's been a busy morning for San Antonio firefighters responding to this apartment building within an apartment community on the city's west side. This video shows the scene last night shortly after 9 o'clock. San Antonio firefighters were called out to the Aspire Apartments on the 1800 block of Bandera Road and Hillcrest. Four of the apartments have major damage, but we're told firefighters were able to contain the flames to just this building. The Red Cross did make the scene. They say property management is assisting in relocating everyone affected. Now they're telling us they did see kids playing with fireworks out in the parking lot earlier, but the cause of this fire remains under investigation. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Five till seven. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Morning rush is here, but we want you to stay alert and stay prepared. Let's get a look at the roadways there. We have 281 at Bassey traffic moving, but be on the lookout. Road debris detected off I-10 westbound at Crossroads Boulevard, and we do have a stall still detected off I-37 uh, southbound at 410. 30-minute drive time to the San Antonio area, and an update that closure at Old Pearsall has cleared. Warm, humid, kind of a murky looking view there looking off to the east along 410. The road is pretty dry right now. The traffic has kind of dried things out. We have a few more showers that are developing in Atascosa County as well as Wilson County sliding up to the northeast. So just to kind of take into account one or two of these uh, showers around here this morning. And then later on this afternoon, more showers and thunderstorms. The potential is there for some to be strong to severe, primarily north of Austin, but there'll be one or two isolated ones in and around uh, kind of the northeastern half of our viewing area. All right. Don't forget if you have the Weather Authority app, update your notifications so you get alerts from our team of meteorologists. Mike, Stephen, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And that way you can stay on top of things. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you back here at nine. Be safe. Good Morning America is next.